would like to say parenthetically here, God has given us in Brother Burnson a marvelous preacher of the gospel. I am a layman in a, a sense now and only hold a few meetings. But when I'm home, I beat the path here every Sunday morning. And I don't bring a book along with me to read while he's a preacher. Where I do some places because I just don't like to waste my time. And I'm here nothing. I don't want to waste my time doing it. I take a book along to read. Uh, when, I know some of these fellows are preaching, but I don't bring one here when Brother Burns is preaching. He's a marvelous preacher of the Word of God. And uh, these people will testify to that fact. Isn't that right? Amen. I'll tell you, I know better, no better in this to be. Of all the preachers I know in this town, I think we have here the best preacher. Amen. Not the largest church, not the largest congregation, the best preacher. Amen. Amen. I, I, don't, I don't like to brag on him, and I tell everybody I meet all around what God God uses preaching. And I thank God for ministers of the gospel that preach the truth in the old-fashioned way and preach with the anointing of God among them. You know, uh, 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 I, I thank God for the preacher that stole me under. I thank God for the preacher that preached the gospel to me and brought me under conviction. And I'm glad I didn't get into a church where they were modernistic and they denied the uh, blood and denied the atonement and, and made Jesus just a mere man. I'm glad that I was taken to a church where they preached the old-fashioned gospel and where I heard that there was a fountain filled with blood drawn from the manual's veins and sinners plunged beneath that blood could wash away all their guilty stains. I thank God for the preacher that preached in the revival that I found God in. Then again, God's Spirit strives through singing. One night, two humble servants of Jesus, Dina Johnson of Ohio, the Ralph Powell of Mohawk Valley in New York, were singing over the air radio station WPG in Atlantic City. They were singing the song, Sing Me a Song of Heaven, Beautiful Homeland Above. As they sang a talk, then young man walked into the service, or into the studio, rather, sat out in the back and uh, listened to them sing. And uh, he became very nervous. And finally he pulled out his handkerchief and wiped the tears from his eyes. Afterwards over, they inquired, who was that? Who was that young, tall, thin young man? And lo and behold, they found out it was Jack Blake's diamond the clay pigeon of New York's underworld. The boy that filled Mario Rothstein's place as the leader of the gambling in New York when Arnold Rothstein was killed. And just a few days after that, some gangsters shot and killed Jack Clay's diamond right in front of the hotel where he was staying. And he went into eternity to meet God. But only God knows what was stirred in his heart yes. as he heard them humble people of Jesus sing that song, sing me a song of heaven, beautiful homeland above. Perhaps he remembered back in his childhood days when he went to Sunday school and church or maybe yes. had even godly yes. parents. God's spirit was striving with that boy yes. and giving him his last call. Our holy revival in Jamestown, Tennessee, 1937, the pastor's wife, Sister Howe, was doing the special singing. And one night she sang a song entitled, Busy Dying, Busy Dying. The theme went, you're busy at this, you're busy at that, you're so preoccupied, but there'll come a time when you'll be busy dying. And as she sang that song, God traveled down that song to the heart of a young girl in that audience, and God said to her, this is your last call. This is your last service. This is your last opportunity. And that girl rushed to the altar as soon as I gave the altar call, and she wept her way through the Calvary and got up with a tear-stained face, and she said, As Sister I was singing, God told me this was my last call. Thank God she obeyed in care. Yes, God's Spirit strives through bereavement. When we look down into the face of a loved one that's called to death, when we look at him in that casket, the thought comes to us, someday you're going to be there. Yes, sir. Someday yes, sir. you're going to be the one lying there. Yes, sir. On the grave they place the words, remember, friend, as you pass by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, soon you will be. Prepare for death and follow me. Yes, sir. God's Spirit strives through the providences of life. I remember one boy in our altar got up and this is what he said. He said, so many things have happened in my life recently. <coughs> he 
said, I felt like I just had to get to God. Yes. God was dealing with him. The shoreline of history is resplendent with illustrations of this truth you take back in the Bible. You remember the Lord said to Simon Peter, he said, Simon, the devil is going to try to sit you as we, but I have prayed for you. You know, the devil has a sifter. He, 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 sift, he sifts out all uh, of the wheat and just he just leaves chaff. He just leaves chaff. And he was going to sift Peter until there was nothing left of his life but chaff. And uh, then the Lord told Peter, he said, if you're going to die, deny me. You're weaker than you think you are. And you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows twice. And he spit out. Do you remember that night? He denied the Lord and finally did it with cursing. And then as Jesus walked out of that judgment hall, the Bible says he looked at Simon. And the next thing, when that old rooster crowed, Simon Peter, it says, remembered and went out and went bitterly and got it back to God. God used the crowing of a rooster to put under conviction the greatest preacher almost of New Testament times. Yes,